Hello, welcome to the Thursday, January 18th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One assumption when running a honeypot is that any vulnerabilities being exploited by an attacker are likely also vulnerabilities that are frequently seen on system because an attacker wouldn't really waste their resources exploiting hardly seen vulnerabilities. Well, the same is probably also true for passwords with our Telnet and SSH logs, we are collecting passwords that attackers are attempting against our honeypots. And Jesse took a look at, well, uh, how numbers are being used in these passwords. Numbers are often used as part of password requirements to achieve a certain complexity. Attackers, of course, know that users are gravitating to certain numbers like password one. Well, uh, some interesting findings here from uh, Jesse. First of all, the number one is by far the most common used number followed by two and three. No big surprise here. What I also like is that when Jesse looked for groups of four numbers that year numbers like 2022, 2021, 2023 are right there in the top of course, the overall top is one, two, three, four. So hackers know how our users are likely going to react to password complexity and also password rotation requirements. And that in part is reflected in the passwords that they're attempting. Probably the lesson that has been pushed in recent years to focus on length and not just simple complexity and not to require password rotation is a sound advice given this data from our honeypots. And Kaspersky has an interesting blog post about how to detect a malware on iOS. Detecting malware on iOS uh, can be uh, tricky because, well, a lot of the internal databases and such are not necessarily that well documented. It can be uh, quite uh, tricky to extract all the data. Well, uh, what they found was that one of the simplest way to get a pretty good idea if a system is compromised is the shutdown log. The shutdown log is created whenever the system is or the iPhone or iOS device is uh, being uh, rebooted or shut down. And uh, the shutdown log logs any processes that were running at the time of the shutdown, which of course may include uh, demons and such that are running in the background that were left by the malware. In particular, shutdown.log will also also point out any processes that delayed the shutdown, which is often the case for some of this malware. And they in particular looked at the famous Pegasus malware. Extracting the lock is also not that terribly complicated. Now, as any sort of very simple methods like this, it's not perfect. It's meant sort of as an initial triage methodology. And uh, they point out a couple of sort of false positives, false negatives that you may run into. In particular, of course, if the system hasn't been rebooted, then of course you don't have a shutdown log. Kaspersky included quite a bit of detail in the blog post, like how to obtain shutdown log and uh, scripts to then parse the log and analyze it. And the FBI and CISA have coordinated the release about details regarding the Antro Ghost malware, if I pronounce this correctly. This is malware going after some old PHP and Apache vulnerabilities. Not terribly exciting. The URLs that are being requested here are some of the sort of all time favorites in our web application uh, honeypot logs. So just seeing these strings in your log is certainly not an indicator that you're compromised. The attacks are ubiquitous and you should see several of them a day in your logs. But uh, you may want to double check if you're vulnerable. And then if you go further down in the advisory, it actually 
is also listing some of the files that may be left behind on the system in case you are vulnerable. And that's uh, what you really want to look for. Also, any connections uh, to the command control infrastructure and such being used by this malware. It installs XMRIC. So again, nothing really that super exciting. Uh, crypto coin miner. And a little bit odd that uh, CISA FBI is sort of pointing out a specific botnet. There are probably dozens of very similar botnets that we see every day trying to do very similar things, basically exploiting older vulnerabilities and then installing crypto coin miners. Also, if you do find a crypto coin miner on your system, do me a favor and double check what else is running on there because you will likely be vulnerable to some of these fairly old and easy to exploit vulnerabilities. And talking about easy to exploit vulnerabilities, but something fairly recent. Some quick update here about Ivanti. There is a proof of concept exploit available now. It's a simple directory traversal attack. An attacker pretty much just has to request a URL that the attacker has access to, and then with slash dot dot pivot to the URL they actually do want to get access to, and this will then allow arbitrary file access on the system and also then lead to remote code execution. Well, and this is it for today. And by the way, if you're interested in actually preventing some of the web application vulnerabilities we're talking about so often in this podcast, I'll be teaching our Securing Web Apps class March 24th, through 29th here in Florida in Orlando and I promise we'll get temperatures up by then it will be absolutely beautiful so uh, come and attend the class links will be in the show notes thanks